Hey everyone, uh, we're going to talk about something that's really weird and shady and I, I just don't like it, alright? We are, or I am, a you know influencer as they say. I am a content creator and I like getting content before the public can because then I can take a look at it, I could potentially review it if I decide to review something, or at least feature something if I think it's really, really cool. And yes, I actually do get stuff once in a while. In fact, in 2020, I seem to be getting stuff a little bit more often. I usually don't get anything but indie games early, but just in the last month, I got, you know, Roller Coaster Tycoon uh, 3 for the Switch sent to me. This is a loot box thing. Uh, the actual game was just a code. Uh, I haven't really done any content around this yet, but maybe I will. I actually I actually do really enjoy the game. I at least want to live stream it. Uh, and then just yesterday, I got this giant box of, of goodness here um, for Bakudan Champions. I didn't even know this was coming. I don't even know how they have my shipping address. Maybe the maybe it's the same company as, as, uh, as Roller Coaster Tycoon. Maybe that's why it happened. Uh, Way Forward, Spin Master, Warner Brothers. Uh, I don't really know much about... Bakunan, so I apologize for that. I'm just trying to glance to see if there's anything, any information on here about who uh, who made that besides the HyperX. Anyways, you'll see that. Whoa! You'll see that, you know, they sent the game and they sent a whole bunch of Bakudan-related things. I don't really know much about Bakudan. Um, my kids will really enjoy this stuff. I don't know. A whole bunch of a whole bunch of stuff. I'm sure it's like 100 plus bucks worth of stuff in here. I have no idea. I am not a Bakudan fan. But the point is that I get review stuff. I'm not trying to flex or anything. I, I do... These are the biggest review things I've gotten so far. I don't get stuff from Nintendo anymore. Uh, when I worked at Zelda Informer, I, I used to get Nintendo uh, games, like the Zelda games. But I as Nintendo Prime, I haven't gotten anything from Nintendo or really any major company beyond Indie Studios until these two arrivals in the last month. Now, here's my thing about these uh, things. When you get them, uh, they often have embargoes. They have NDAs. So there are certain days you can say certain things. And right now, as the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 have both had their embargoes lifted and we're getting reviews. Today, PlayStation 5. Yesterday, Xbox Series X slash S. Um, what's interesting is obviously the getting the personal opinions on these platforms. And Nintendo Switch had the same thing going on back in 2017 when people would get it early and, you know, got to say things about it. Now, according to a YouTuber named Last Gamer, uh, he was one person that was in contact with Nintendo. He's a bigger YouTube channel than me, 100,000 plus subscribers. Uh, he, got, he gets consoles early all the time. He was in contact with Nintendo about getting the Switch early. He claims that Nintendo... Uh, was going to put stipulations on him, and apparently these stipulations must exist with all the other reviewers out there, or all the other unboxers or whatever, because the stipulations included, hey, you know, we'll give you one if you're going to say friendly things about it. In fact, not only do you have to say nice things about the Switch, here are bullet point list things we want you to talk about. How, how nice the box and packaging is, how cute... Uh, the game cartridges are and small and compact, like basically a bullet point of things they want you to say, making you essentially a marketing arm for the company. And this is a little shady because it doesn't get true opinions out there. In fact, here is the clip from his last video talking about this. And then when I read the embargo, I have to talk favorably about the Switch. I have to talk about how the box looks awesome and compact. There was so much there that there's no room for my opinion. And I did not like this. When I questioned Nintendo, they said, don't worry, we're not sending you a Switch now. So I went down another avenue, my contact in Japan. In the meantime, I saw a lot of unboxing videos on YouTube. And it made me cringe because all I could see was Nintendo's words. The Switch box? This? Wow. It's not that big. It's not that big. And it's, it's lovely. Oh. 
I love it. <laughs> Take it out. I gotta go, guys. Look at I'll, that thing. I'll see you later. That is something to covet wow. right there, isn't it? Now, pretty much every YouTuber who got a Switch uploaded their video on the 23rd of February. Right now. Look how small this is. That's great packaging. It's really good packaging. I, I want to see. Mm, sweet, beautiful Switch. Look how cute this little tiny cartridge is. Because everything's so small. It is so the, small. The, the games are small. Don't you, so light, too. You, packaging is as sleek as your console. Um, but the Switch is never going back in there. It feels pretty solid. It's a nice substantial feel. This yeah. is uh, how this sort of stands up to some abuse. I mean, it feels robust, right? Like, feel, yeah. the, that feel means, the heft this of that. This is so... I just I can't say it enough how yeah. beautiful this is. It's so sleek, right? It's so sleek. Yes. It's like It's so little. It's like the size of an SD card. That is beautiful. Look how small that is. That is beautiful. Everything is small with this machine. As you can see, I'm not okay with that. Nintendo was using the will give you a switch early stipulation to get positive feedback instead of honest feedback. Uh put on to consumers and when he tried to give honest feedback nintendo took down his videos he went through the process of, of context he had in japan and australia to get the console about a week early and nintendo basically took out all of his videos uh even though he got the console through fairly legit means so i to me it's it's frustrating thinking back to the launch of switch and as much as i love the platform to see that nintendo was not being honest when they sent these things out to some fairly major influencers and that the influencers were okay agreeing to these, you know, stipulations that you need to talk positively about something in order to get it. See, I got the Bakudan game and the Roller Coaster Tycoon game without any stipulations put on what I can say. They talk about certain things like, you know, if I was going to make a review, I was going to do preview content, you know, you can only stream X amount of footage, uh, X amount of hours of footage, or you could only show the game up to a certain point or talk about a game up to a certain point. But they never tell you what you have to say, you know, they'll, they'll mention some marketing points, but you don't have to say any of it. You can say whatever you want. I have never been offered anything from Nintendo included where I couldn't give honest opinions, but it appears with switch. Nintendo was like, yeah, we'll send it out early to you. If, if you'll tow the company line. And I, I think this is a, a very crappy practice. One that I think we're well aware happens, by the way. We know influencers are constantly getting products that uh, they are being told to talk glowingly of. But there's a difference between, say, oh, a sponsorship and, you know, being honest. Like, if Nintendo wants to contact me and they'll be like, look, Nate, we know you're a huge Zelda fan. We know you have a huge Zelda following. You know, we want to send you a copy of Breath of the Wild 2, collector's edition, or whatever the case might be. And we want you to talk glowingly about the game, which I probably would anyways, but we want you to talk glowingly about the game and mention this and that. I will I'd, I'd respond to the Nintendo and I would say, that's fine, but uh that that would be a sponsored video. That would not be an honest opinion. I would need a note to the fans in the title and to you guys on camera this is a sponsored by nintendo video to showcase breath of the wild 2 this is not an honest opinion on the game this is a sponsored video where i am showing you what nintendo is allowing me to show you see that is fine if nintendo wants to contact me and 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 pay me to basically commercialize their stuff okay that's okay that's a sponsor that's what sponsors are for you know, when you watch like a Linus Tech Tip video, it's like, well, oh, check out our sponsor. Or when you see like the Mr. Beast, check out our sponsor, Honey. Like, of course, he's going to say nothing but good things because that's what a sponsorship is for. You are paid a paycheck to say nice things. That's fine. What I don't like is if you're going to be like, hey, we'll send you this system early so you can review it and, and, and check it out and do this. But in this video, in this video, in this video, you need to say these things and you can only talk positively. Tell us right now if you're going to talk negatively. If you are, we're not going to send you the system. And the thing is, for an honest review, you can't honestly tell Nintendo if you're going to say anything negative because you have to have it in your hand. You have to be able to review it. You know, the Joy-Con issues and the floppiness in the dock and, like, you know, how, how the people that were breaking the locks on their Joy-Cons, like, all that stuff is honest reviews that, you know, didn't really exist at that time. It was a lot of unboxings and glowing praise for the compact size and the cute cartridges and how great it feels in the hands, which maybe it doesn't feel great in the hands, but it's not like you could say that. 
or Nintendo won't send you a Switch. Now, obviously, once you got to launch day, you know, the, the, the cover can come off and you can say whatever you want. But, you know, if you've already put out a bunch of positive videos without being able to be honest, eh, you know, the damage has already been done. They've already pre-ordered and made purchasing decisions based off of your suggestions. Now, yes, some people might put hashtag sponsor. Some people might put hashtag ad. But most people did. You know, I, Justine, and others, I, I'm, I'm not harping on these people. I enjoy their content. But we all know that they accept things that they are expected to talk glowingly of. And the thing is, they might have talked glowingly of it anyways. And it might be an honest-to-goodness opinion. But you can't trust it. Because we now know that Nintendo sent out Switches without or, or with stipulations that you needed to be positive. I know this happens. We all know this happens. I wasn't aware it was happening with Nintendo. Because as I said, I've gotten Nintendo review copies before in the past. Maybe that's why I don't get them now. Uh, but yeah, like there was no stipulation that you had to be positive about the game. Even if it's highly likely a channel like me, Nintendo Prime, would probably talk positively about, hey, a Nintendo game. You want to send me Age of Calamity early? High chance I'm going to talk really good about it, but I'm not going to just, you know, let things certain things go. I will explore the frame rate. I will explore a lot of different things. I honestly am a little miffed, I suppose, is how to do it. A little miffed at why things are this way. Uh, and I know that for these companies, they're just trying to get all the positive press they can. Social media, these influencers, myself included, are this new avenue of advertising that's different than TV. We, we realize when we watch commercials on TV, it's an ad. We know when we see, you know, Mountain Dew on a billboard in an NBA game, we know that's an ad. But when people watch these influencers, sometimes it's not like so sure what what is an ad and what isn't. What is sponsored content and what's the truth? Because even if you do, you know, e even if your video on YouTube is listed as a sponsored video, there's an option you're supposed to select when you have a sponsor or a paid promotion in your video. Even when you have that listed on your video, the viewer might not know if the paid promotion is the product you're talking about. Is it something you mentioned? Like, you know, hey, you can get our merchandise. At, at, you know, like what part of it is the paid promotion? I, it's not always super obvious and not everyone notices that little warning in the corner that says paid promotion again i'm not faulting the content creator so much because hey we're all trying to make a living if this is what you have to accept to, to get a product early i get it but honestly if nintendo had offered me a switch early but they said the stipulation is you have to talk glowingly you have to talk about our bullet points you can't talk about the things that you don't like about the system that's not good. That's not something that I think I would accept. Or maybe I would accept it and then just not conform to it. And then Nintendo would never talk to me again. I don't know. Um, I, I, Nintendo, after making it clear to the Nintendo, this guy did that. He's not going to do that. They stopped talking to him. So I, th this is just not okay. And I would never accept anything like this. If it has Like that Bakudin game that just showed up out of nowhere. Yeah, in, in the little letter they sent, oh, you know, we're going to give you details on how you can handle coverage, you know, later in an email. Well, the game's already out, so they can't tell me how to cover the game anymore. I wasn't even planning to cover the game. Maybe that's why they sent it to me. They're like, hey, we have this extra press kit we never sent out. Let's send it to this Nintendo Prime guy. Maybe he'll mention it in a video. Got mentioned in this video. Maybe we'll do some gameplay. But I don't know anything about Bakudin. But I, like, isn't it an anime now that I think about it, I don't, I don't, I literally have never heard of Bakudam beyond an ad or like a toy at Walmart or something. So I don't know anything. My children probably know. I should probably ask them. Um, and I, I guess it has good reviews. I, I don't, I don't actually know. It, the game came out, what, three days ago? It's a full $60 game. So I'm hoping that it's not like garbage. But I, again, I don't know. I haven't played it. Maybe, we'll, maybe we'll try it out on a live stream later. I just, I get increasingly frustrated when this happens. I wanted to make you guys aware this happened. And as much as I love Nintendo, I, I want you guys to know that Nintendo participated in this practice. This isn't to make Nintendo look bad or, or, or say they're a crappy company because so many companies do this. I don't think it's necessarily, um, you know, makes the company overall a piece of crap. But whatever marketing uh, people were in control at the time, I don't think... Anyone should be that way. You should always be so confident in the product you're putting out there that if you're going to send review copies that you think you're going to get praised anyways. If you're not confident enough in the Switch at launch that you think people are going to praise it, 
then don't send out review units, I guess, which also is a bad look. But hey, you know, I I believe in in companies not telling you what to say about a product that is a key thing with your audience unless it's an ad. All right, I am Nathaniel Robojance from the Tenor Prime. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.